Dear students, in econometrics we use three types of data, namely cross section data, time series data, and panel data and uh, we have discussed in detail how to use cross section data that is data collected at a point in time in regression analysis and also the issues associated with cross section data and related topics. We have also discussed in detail the specific issues associated with the time series data and the methods to deal with these issues, etc. And we know that panel data is a combination of cross section and time series data. If you collect uh, observations from different time periods, say 2000, 2001, 2002, etc., from different entities, say different households, it is not uh, panel data. Panel is a sp special type of combination of time series and cross section. A pooled data, we will say, become panel if and only if the same cross sectional unit is sampled again and again. So if uh, you observe the consumption income pattern of 100 families in the year 2010, the same families in 2011, 12, etc., etc., it is panel data. So panel data has both the space and the time dimensions, both the space and the time dimensions. And uh, today panel data is extensively used in econometrics. The scope of panel data is very high, it has wide applications. So in this session and in the subsequent sessions that follow, we discuss panel data regression models, panel data regression models. The other names of panel data are pooled data, pooled data, combination of time series and cross section data, micro panel data, micro panel data, longitudinal data, longitudinal, longitudinal data, event history analysis, cohort analysis, etc. The popular name is panel data. Also, longitudinal is also a name extensively used in the context of panel data. Now, if uh, you are using a cross section sample, we give the notation y i, x 2 i, x 3 i, etc. I is equal to 1, 2, etc. Yeah. Observations. If you are using time series yt, x2, t, x3, t, etc., t is equal to 1, 2, etc., capital letter T. When we use time series, our notation is yit 
x2 it x3 it etc i is 1 to n cross sectional units t is 1 to t the number of time periods if the number of cross sectional units is 100 10 is 100 number of time periods is 10 t is 10 like that so the notations of yit x2 it x3 it etc etc so we define a panel data into balanced panel and unbalanced part unbalanced panel a balanced panel is one in which observations on all the variables are available for each entity and also each time period balanced if you have 100 entities 100 individuals 10 years there will be no missing observations all the observations so total number of observations will be 100 into 10 thousand no missing observations unbalanced means some missing data for some time period some missing data for some time period for example n is equal to 100 for some entities data on all the 10, 10 time periods are not available it is a case of unbalanced panel and both are used in regression analysis that we will see later another terminology is short and long panel short and long short means t less than n t less than n short long means t greater than n t greater than n that is the number of time periods greater than number of entities cross section units t less than n short peter kennedy classify panel data into three one is long and narrow long and narrow means long time dimension narrow means small number of cross section units that is say three cross section units 10 time periods long and narrow second is short and wide that is many cross section units number of time periods is small then long and wide long and wide both the number of time periods and the number of cross sections are very large as an example to long and narrow is the data by Grunfeld. it was n is equal to 11 t is equal to t is equal to 20 as an example of wide and short the panel study of income dynamics of 8000 families since 19 8000 yen since 1968 long and wide example the pen world tables purchasing power parity and national income accounts of 1 n is equal to 188 countries from t is equal to 1968 onwards 1968 onwards etc so these are all terminologies in the context of parallel data now let us see what are the advantages of panel data now compared to cross-section data or time series data 
panel data has some advantages. These advantages are suggested by Baltag. Body plus Baltagi. The one advantage is since panel data deals with the individuals, firms, states, countries, etc., these are the entities over time, there are bound to be heterogeneity in these units which are unobservable. We deal with the individuals, individuals, firms, states, characterized by heterogeneity. Characterized by heterogeneity. And uh, heterogeneity will be unobservable. This unobservable heterogeneity cannot be detected using cross-section data or time series data. But if you have panel data, we can estimate the regression model taking into account this heterogeneity explicitly by allowing for subject specific variables. There will be individual heterogeneity at a individual level, firm level, state level, country level, etc. This heterogeneity will be unobservable. But in the panel data, this unobservable heterogeneity can be explicitly taken into account by allowing for subject specific variables that we will see later. A second advantage is by combining cross section and time series data, panel data will give you more informative data. Panel data will give you more variability, less collinearity among regressors, more degrees of freedom and more efficiency. Now, as panel data consists of both the time series and cross section, the sample size will increase, degrees of freedom will increase, efficiency will increase, the data information is high, variability will increase. Variability increases means estimator become more efficient, collinearity decreases and the like. For example, you consider 28 Indian states. If uh, you have uh, only a cross-section data, you have only 28 observations. Suppose that you have data from 1971 to 2000. If you are using only one state, again you have 30 observations. But if you can, if you have data on 28 states across 30 years, 28 into 30, you have a very large sample size. You have a very large sample size. It increases the efficiency, increases variability in the data, increases degrees of freedom, etc., etc. That is the second advantage of panel data, which cannot be obtained from cross section or time series data individually. The third advantage is by studying a cross section unit repeatedly, it is better to suited to study such a phenomena as dynamics of change, spells of unemployment, job turnover, labor mobility, etc. As uh, the same person is considered again and again over the years, it is well suitable for studying dynamics of change, spells of unemployment, job turnover, labor mobility, and such a phenomenon. Then, yeah, there is a third advantage. A fourth advantage is, since panel data can better detect 
plus measure effects that cannot be observed in cross section or time series. Example, the effect of minimum wage loss on employment can be better studied if we include successive wage, waves of minimum wage increases by government. Successive increases of minimum wage by government. Similarly, phenomena such as returns to scale, technological change, etc., can be studied better if you have panel data. So, panel data has many advantages over cross section data, provided that panel data is available. Panel data will give you more informative data, more sample size. We can study many phenomena using panel data which cannot be studied using cross-section or time series data. And these are the advantages of panel data suggested by Baltar.